OK, the wooden structure. Will distribute the shear flow. OK, so it's like transmission, right? So it will it is like fluid flow. Once V is applied, the shear flow will fill up the, the top wet first. Yes or no? Right. It, yeah. it will, right. It will fill up the top wet. And if you look at the nails, the nails are like pipes. OK, it will transmit the water outwards. You get where I'm coming from. Can yeah, so because it's not actually connected, that's why. Yeah, you're only yeah. So it, it has to the, 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 the upper flange has to carry the load first. OK. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Think think of it that way. Think of like how Mira is thinking now. I want you to have the same same mindset. Okay. Then this is more acceptable. Or not, you're like, oh man, it's so abstract. Okay. Okay. Think simple. Okay. That, that's why we call it uh shear flow. Okay. So now the next thing that that's a good question. Okay. So the next one, I'm gonna get this diagram again. Okay, so we have, so the next one is uh, shear failure mode number two. Here we go and go for mode number two. This is real engineering work, by the way. Okay, uh, I've 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 helped uh, I've helped I've not helped I've consult landscaping companies that want to build a huge deck for someone that is one story high they, and they want to put a grand piano, not a grand piano, a very heavy outdoor kitchen. Can you stand the load? Okay. All the calculation I've used is all from here. Okay, no more and no less. Okay, so mode number two is failure, but it's in 3D loading. Okay, after this course, you guys will look at 3D loading like Mickey Mouse crap. Okay, you have no problem. Failure due to the uh, wooden structure or failure or shear failure. Due to the wooden structure. So we the we know now here we are going to focus. So we know that tau max will occur at the centroid. Okay, and why this is because. Of two things because of Q max is maximum. <laughs> Q max is maximum. Eugene, come on, redundant. And thickness is what? Minimum. Right? The thickness is minimum. Okay. So now we're going to find. So we know some mention of Q. Uh, theta of Q is equal to Q of the uh, flange plus by Q of the web. And Q of the flange, we had it before. We calculated before, which is 168. Okay, web is plus, so web, you have two, and the two over here. Is because of left and right. The width is equal to 0 0.5 inch. The depth is equal to 5 plus by 2 plus by 2 because it's this entire thing. Okay, so 5 plus 2 plus 2. And the y bar is equal to. 5 plus 2 plus 2 multiplied by half. Okay, so this over here is your y bar. Okay, so from here, 168 plus by uh, 2 times 0.5 times by 9 times 9 times 0.5 is equal to 40.5. So this is equal to 168 plus by 40.5. Is 208.5 inches to power cube. So we just consider 
this entire section. Okay. Maybe okay, just consider here, here, and here. We don't consider the below because rule number four, the first moment of area cannot cross the centroid. Okay. So now from here, we can we we have we have everything already, right? As I said, the most difficult part is finding Q. Okay, so the shear. Someone has question. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, I I'm just a bit uh confused about why the depth of the web is five plus two plus two. Should it only be five? No, because the 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 thickness. You, oh, you, I see. Right, you see oh, it, it's because it continues to the top. Yeah. It oh, okay. Goes up to the top. Okay. Okay. Okay, you scared you. the crap off me, man. <laughs> so tell Max. It is good. So you, we know that VQ or uh, V is equal to 0 0.5 P. Okay, now we know that this is 208.5. And then second moment of area we were given to be 2902. And then this is uh thickness is 0 0.5. And this is the two over here is equal to left and right. Okay. Now I have students or I have students, not your batch, previous batch tell me, Eugene, the two, is it because of the top and bottom bolt? Right? And the answer is no. It's not because of top or the bottom. Because the analysis, the first moment of area cannot cross the what? The centroid. Are we clear? Okay, so the, the two is not top or bottom, but rather the left and right or the inside and the outside. Okay, nothing to do with top and bottom. So from here, we know that tau max is equal to three. I'm sent about three multiplied by two nine zero two multiplied by zero point five. Multiply by 2, divide by 0 0.5, and divide by 208.5, and this is will be our P. So P will be equal to 3, 3 times by 2902 times 0.5 times 2 divided by 0.5 divided by 208.5, and it's equal to 83.511. Times 10 to power 3. Pounds. Right. So we remember. So sometimes we ask, does this make sense? Right. As I say, the difference between a good engineer and a bad and, and a not so good engineer is a good engineer will look at the number and will say, hmm, this looks about right. Can someone tell me what is this? Hmm, this looks about right. Anyone, please. <laughs> oh, God. Anyone? Hello? Why I say this looks about right, like, mm, right? Anyone? So a way to compare this, and you guys, you guys know, okay? You guys are just being modest and shy. The structure, the shearing force required to induce failure is 83.511. If you look at the joint, what is it? 6912 pound force. So that's why as an engineer, you're like, hmm, this looks about right. Why? Because the joint will fail first. If now this value over here, right? This value, the 83.511 times 10 to power 3 is lower than the joint. Holy, you, you, you start to uh, worry, okay? Or, or doing thumb test, you call me Eugene. Do you think this is right or wrong? And my answer to you is I can't tell you anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is here. Then the next one, we are going to find mode three of failure. Okay. Number three, uh, failure due to bending moment now you guys are expert in this now okay yesterday i saw the i saw you guys attempt those questions a lot of you got good grades are we i'm not finished we have not uh, finished marking yet but but yeah uh, one student got a hundred 
super impressive. Okay, this batch, you guys are really good. So the stress allowed above, right, is equal to mz over izz multiplied by y. Okay, now anyone will want to tell me now, okay, will failure mode 3, the magnitude be higher than failure mode 2? Okay, can anyone tell me? Will it be higher or lower? Hello? Will it be higher or lower? Anyone, please? So before you start calculating like this, you need to make an intelligent guess, right? And the, the obvious one, that failure due to normal stress, okay, will always be higher than shear stress. These are the good things to remember, okay? Failure in under normal stress will always be higher than failure in what? Shear stress, okay? Uh, thing. So if you look at normal, if you look at any catalog, the shear stress is about 600 megapascal to failure, the normal stress. The shear stress is only like 250. You look at any, any uh, material handbook, you have a chance, I know you cannot go to the library now, but you can you can you can look at online textbooks, okay, or or or, or B and Johnson textbooks. You always look at the normal stress and shear stress. The normal stress is always higher than the shear stress. So for this case, okay, the force induced due to normal loading, okay, should be higher than due to shear. Okay. So this is this is how okay you have a good few value answer. So the maximum allowable is eight times ten to about three. And due to the bending moment, the maximum, where is our bending moment? 24P divided by IZZ, which is 2902. And the distance furthest away is equal to what? The distance furthest away, wait, I'm lost now. Distance furthest away is 5 plus 2 plus 2, 9. Right, so from here, P will be equal to 8 power 3 that's by 2909 divided by 9 divided by 24 is equal to 107.481 times 10 to power 3 pounds okay so from here the p allowable will be induced due to the joints, which is equal to 6910. And this is controlled by the what? Controlled by the fastener. Okay, I'm going to look at Another example, okay? I'm going to look at another. Oh, before I go on, anyone, any questions regarding this example? Anyone, please. Anyone having doubt? I have a question. Um, yes. You said that the fastener, like, uh, the force will always be less than, like, the shear and the normal force. So why do we bother calculating mode two and three if we know the fastener will most likely fail first? Evidence. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, you, you, not, not, not just, so when you do calculation, okay, when, when, when we do cal calculation, okay, you have the knowledge because you have done 3A. I was an expert witness in, 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 in a, in a, in a court case uh, representing the defendant to defend the design that has failed. And the engineers were trying to show that it's not, they are fault, but rather than the assembly fault. So I have to show all this calculation similar to what I shown you down here, or the engineers will calculate all this. So what if the engineers did not calculate the fastener and went directly to the shear stress of the structure, but the, the joints field? For example, we know, okay, we are a very inclusive community known as mechanical engineers. We know, but it's not common to a judge. Usually, the the the, the all these expert witness the cases have been the last time the judge have done physics is high school. <laughs> okay, so that's one reason why. Okay, so uh, that is my only answer for you. Okay, 
and now we are learning okay i have to teach you everything okay in later on when you are a, a, a experienced engineer you can say ah don't waste time we just calculate there okay mariam you're absolutely right i'm not saying that you're wrong okay but now we are taking